qui sont très bien répartis sur les trois marchés. Euh, et voilà, où Tahiti Tourisme a augmenté son investissement au cours des dernières années. Et avec un coût par PAX, c'est intéressant de le noter, euh, moins cher que sur beaucoup d'autres marchés, et en particulier sur les marchés hispanophones qui remportent la, la palme, si j'ose dire, euh, et qui, euh, qui, est, qui sont des marchés très, très, euh, avec un coût par PAX très, très faible. Euh, un marché où principalement, là je vais parler du Brésil, donc un marché de 210 millions d'habitants avec 60 millions de, de personnes qui ont le niveau de vie euh, d'Européens, qui ont donc les moyens de, de voyager, de bien voyager. Quand ils viennent dans les îles de Tahiti, euh, c'est surtout euh, vraiment des, des prestations de luxe hein, qu'ils recherchent. Par contre, c'est vrai qu'on est bloqué, notamment au niveau de la desserte aérienne. C'est un vrai point faible sur le Brésil, quelque chose sur lequel on doit travailler. Euh, on a quelques espoirs. L'aéroport de, de São Paulo m'a contacté il n'y a pas longtemps. Ils sont très intéressés à positionner la destination. Donc, mais c'est un vrai frein qui limite notre développement euh, ces dernières années. Et on l'a vu pourtant sur l'Argentine, quand Air New Zealand est arrivé, c'est vrai qu'on a tout de suite doublé les flux. Donc l'aérien, au risque de me faire taper dessus par, par les compagnies aériennes, reste évidemment euh, un enjeu très important. Un marché où euh, on a quand même beaucoup de force, notamment, je l'ai déjà dit, euh, un niveau de dépense très élevé, un niveau de prestations recherchées euh, de grande qualité. Et puis l'apparition de nouvelles clientèles, notamment sur les niches de sportifs. Alors on va parler de sport, justement, dans pas longtemps. Euh, ce que je viens de vous présenter, eh bien, ça nous permet d'être très optimiste, en fait, hein, sur les prochaines années, sur la décennie qui vient. Et euh, ce qu'on sait, c'est que si on arrive à mettre, à mettre en place et à, à vraiment euh, développer cette desserte aérienne, on peut facilement doubler les flux depuis l'Amérique du Sud. Donc en 2020... Euh, trois objectifs ont été euh, bien identifiés. On va euh, poursuivre les efforts qu'on a commencé pour travailler sur les activités sportives et notamment le VAA, principalement au Brésil. On va renforcer nos actions trade au Chili et en Argentine et on va accompagner la croissance du marché colombien qui est tout petit pour l'instant, c'est 200 PAX, mais c'est un marché très réactif qui s'est ouvert, qui connaît un vrai essor touristique depuis quelques années. Alors le VAA, eh bien oui, on fait beaucoup de VAA au Brésil, c'est étonnant, mais on a des centaines de rameurs au Brésil et, euh, et euh, pas mal et des dizaines de clubs euh, un peu partout sur le littoral brésilien. Et on, on s'associe cette année pour la première fois. La première, le premier partnership va avoir lieu le, entre le 7 et 8 décembre prochain. Ce sera la première édition. Euh, donc je ne peux pas vous en parler par rapport à ce qu'on a déjà fait cette année, mais je l'ai déjà inscrit au plan d'action 2020, parce qu'on a, a décelé un vrai engouement euh, euh, donc sur cette niche. Et euh, rien que pour parler de cette compétition Riova, qu'on va d'ailleurs rebaptiser Tahiti Riova pour la première fois, euh, nous permet d'atteindre environ 200 000, 2000 personnes lors d'un seul événement. Donc ça vous montre un peu le potentiel de ce type d'action. Voilà, avec des KPI qui nous permettent aussi euh, de faire un véritable travail B2B2C et de travailler avec des tours opérateurs brésiliens qui développent de nouveaux packages euh, sur, euh, sur cette niche de produits. La deuxième action que je vous présente aujourd'hui, il y en a beaucoup d'autres, mais on n'en présente que trois, le, ce sera la deuxième édition du Roadshow Brésil-Argentine-Chili. Donc cette année, c'était une petite édition, on avait quelques partenaires de poids par, pourtant qui nous ont suivis, comme vous pouvez le voir sur la photo, avec une équipe voilà, dynamique et enjouée. Pour, pour représenter les îles de Tahiti au Brésil et en Amérique du Sud. Donc on compte sur vous pour toute information. Venez me voir, j'ai déjà les dates des prochaines, de la prochaine édition 2020. Donc 150 professionnels sélectionnés, rencontrés, principalement des tours opérateurs ou des agences qui font de, du sur-mesure. En troisième action que je vous présente aujourd'hui, alors l'idée c'est vraiment de faire venir une équipe de tournage très importante pour ne pas les nommer Globo Reporter, qui est le plus grand groupe médiatique au Brésil et qui nous permettrait, si on arrivait vraiment à les convaincre et à monter cette opération assez délicate à organiser, un potentiel de 14 millions de téléspectateurs. Voilà. Merci pour toute question. Je suis à votre disposition. Maoruru. Muito obrigado, Caroline, pour cette intervention. Euh, petite rectification, ce n'est pas un téléphone retrouvé, mais un téléphone perdu. Si vous les avez <rire> retrouvés près des fontaines, merci de venir vers moi. C'est un Galaxy Samsung S10. Maruru, 
Ne vous en faites pas, il y a un tracking hein, si jamais il ne revient pas. Euh, donc pour euh, continuer, nous allons accueillir notre avant-dernière représentante, euh, représentante du marché Canada, Mademoiselle Amalia Meliti. Bonjour, good afternoon, Yorana. Uh, again, my name is Amalia Meliti, and I am here on behalf of Tahiti Tourism Canada. But I cannot take the credit for the incredible work that has been done in market. We have a passionate team back home that includes three people, one of which lives in Quebec. Her name is Colette Ba. Many of you might know her. And two other people who are amazing, Tanya and our international intern. We are just so honored and humbled and excited to keep working for the islands of Tahiti. You know, when I started with um, Tahiti two and a half years ago, we were challenged with increasing our numbers. Oops, yeah, we don't need a presentation. Um, did I do something wrong? Okay, to increase those numbers. And I am happy to share this moment with you that since last year, we have increased our tourism arrivals by 23%. 23%. So how have we gotten there? I'll show you a little bit. Okay. Oh, how do I go back? There we go. All right. I'm not going to go into every single statistic on this infographic, but this is basically a nutshell of the work we have done on behalf of your country. We have been hitting the roads getting into people's offices, meeting with journalists, tour operators, travel agencies, going to face-to-face -to -face with consumers to tell them the story of the islands of Tahiti, the true story. Not just, and no disrespect, the iconic islands, but a little deeper. And as a result of our passion and our work, we are doing we have gotten to these numbers. And as you can see here, by um, end of, oh, this is a wrong slide. So um, by end of this year, we'll be looking at increasing our tourism arrivals by 10% by the end of this year. So here is a glimpse of our 2020 marketing objectives and goals, similar to many of our other destinations, um, representation offices, um, where we're going to dive a little deeper into the niche markets, go a little further with our Tahitian guest house campaign, and um, really extend our marketing partnerships with the tour operators and travel agencies throughout Canada. Um, some of the partnerships that we've been working with is right here on this slide. These are our trusted traditional tour operators that have been bringing travelers here um, for many years and has been increasing their bookings. We're looking to increase those bookings by another 10% with the support of all the local industry partners here um, to help us really dive a little deeper and come up with new packaging and new stories. Um, and speaking of stories, we have been working with influential writers, media, broadcast television shows, bloggers, influencers, to really bring the story of Tahiti to light. And we're looking at 2020 to increase our earned media impressions by 85 million media impressions. And how are we going to do that? We are going to come up, I mean, I'm going to share in a, in a moment four different concepts that we've come up with for 2020 um, to work really closely again with our partners. The airlines have been an absolute necessity to, uh, to ensure that our programming is a success. Without their support, we would not be getting these numbers. So thank you to all of you. And that's an applause to to everyone here in this room. So I'm excited to kind of announce a couple of new concepts. And um, this is one concept that we have been trying to sort of figure out who do we work with on the online travel agency. There's so many out there. Right now, there is a company called Flight Network. It is actually the largest owned and operated Canadian online travel agency and the second most widely used online travel agency in Canada, just behind Expedia. They know Canadians. They understand their mindset and more than the American brand. So we're looking to do a advertising campaign where it would be a three-month program reaching their users through their top 
um, and, and to the bottom of their funnel, making sure that we get them excited about the islands of uh, Tahiti and then persuade them and convert those bookings into sales. A second um, endeavor is with the media. Like I said before, we've been working with influential media for the last two and a half years. The one thing we haven't done is brought the fashion aspect, the cultural fashion aspect of Tahiti to light. So we're looking to work with two of these top high glossy print publications, El Canada and Fashion Magazine, to bring not only the Tahiti Fashion Week story alive, but also the living like a local story. So we're going to allow these journalists to come experience Tahiti Fashion Week, but also meet all the other people outside of that community, get to know the culture, get to know the people, and come back with some really cool um, story ideas. And the next um, endeavor that we're looking to do is a Canadian media mission. For two and a half years, we've been doing a lot of work with the trade and doing what we call travel um, Tahiti receptions. So this coming year, we will be dedicating a night exclusive to media where we'll invite about 30 to 40 top journalists in Vancouver and Toronto, two of our mecca, media mecca markets. And during that um, event, we're going to provide an activation where we're going to bring to life something cultural about Tahiti, whether it's the Tahitian oils and the benefits of that, because right now Canadians are huge on wellness and health, um, or something where we would bring in the flower aspect of the destination and maybe learn a little bit about the Tahitian alphabet, which ties in really well with our new campaign, Words of Mana. So a little bit on the cultural end. And our third concept here, or fourth, is keep calm, dive in Tahiti. So we've been working on this existing platform called the Outdoor Adventure and Travel Show to showcase all of the water activities and beyond uh, that's available in the islands of Tahiti. This year, we want to make a bigger splash. We want to take over a pool that they actually have for people who are looking to be PADI certified. And we need a Tahiti diving expert there with us to, um, to sort of walk them through what they would be able to do when they're in the islands of Tahiti and really highlighting this experience because this is one of your biggest selling points. Um, and also tie that into a trip giveaway where we would actually only allow those that are getting PADI certified at the show to be eligible for our trip. And that gives us a good measurement of who is really interested in coming to the islands of Tahiti. So that's, and it's happening in four different cities. And so I encourage everyone here to consider possibly joining us. This is a B2C platform, but we do bring on, bring in our B2B partners to join us. Last year we had two of our Canadian tour operators, a Tahiti certified specialist. Um, this year we would like to have a diving expert with us from Tahiti. So I'm, I'm looking forward to speaking to anyone out there that's in the diving um, industry to explore this a little bit more with me. And that is it. I think I'm under, but um, thank you, Maruru, and please come and speak to me. Ciao. Thank, thank you, Amalia. Nous allons nous rendre maintenant aux États-Unis, donc euh, notre dernier marché. Et pour cela, nous accueillons euh, Christine Carlson qui va clôturer ce tour du monde. Well, good afternoon, and I am the only thing between all of you and lunch, so I will make this fast. <laughs> Please, they say. I've had the good fortune of working alongside some Tahitians in our U.S. office the last several years, and while they've all exemplified the friendly Tahitian spirit, they've also taught me that when you first meet Tahitians, sometimes they're very shy and humble. Americans, not so much. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, we've saved the best for last. Well, maybe not the best, but the biggest. And notice I didn't say the tallest. Let's go right into our numbers here. We know in 2018 over 2017, we enjoyed an 11% increase, and we are very aggressive with our projections for the next couple of years with a 16% and 10% increase as well. 
Now, I would love to take credit for that or my team, but of course I can't. As Julian really outlined in the statistics presentation today, it has so much to do with the U.S. economy, the propensity of Americans to travel, and let's face it, our incredible air landscape, as I like to say. So in addition to our daily and double daily flights from the international flagship carrier, we also have new airlines. And so all of this with just direct lift, nonstop eight hours, I know it makes my colleagues very envious. So I'm very fortunate. Our room nights have also gone up and that's gonna bring me right into some of the trends because the room nights figures, as we learned earlier, really does include all kinds of accommodations. And so you see that first little icon, someone trekking up the mountain? Well, that is to signify adventure and American travelers more than ever are looking for adventure, kind of as Mario shared with us as well. And they are actually more than likely to have ever have stayed in an Airbnb. They're also looking for a hyper-local, personalized, and unique travel experience, and one that they hope is going to change their worldview. And finally, the environment is very important to American travelers. Not only the external environment that we'll be hearing about later on our sustainability panel, but also their own personal well-being environment. So, bragging about all these numbers, as we also say in the U.S., if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're just gonna keep doing some of the wonderful actions we've done with all of your support and throw in a couple new ones. So our first one is a paid Wi-Fi sponsorship at an iconic LA location, the Hollywood Bowl. Many of you may know, traveling throughout the US, that the Wi-Fi provider Bongo, Boingo, sorry, speaking a different language there, is indeed prevalent throughout U.S. airports. So what will happen when people go to this Hollywood Bowl location, which over a six-month season is home to more than 100 music and cultural events, is you'll have to watch the video in order to connect to Wi-Fi. And a great thing about this is that we can change the video and the call to action at any time so our partners can be part of this campaign. It might look something like this. AV, would you assist me? May I have some help with the video? <laughs> okay, well, it was a lovely video, the one we... And then, of course, we'll be able to have all the KPIs of engagement moving forward to whether it's our website or a partner's website or another separate landing page. So continuing in this space of paid media, we're going to take advantage of the likes of Americans to listen to podcasts, particularly in these troubled political times. We all like to take a breather and they're very popular. They're on very many different platforms and we can have a Tahitian narrator. We can have somebody in a partner interview. We can have a famous podcast host. And what this will be will be custom content, 30 minute shows amplified by various other advertising tactics, and also this is a way to hit so many of our strategic objectives as we have entirely editorial control. We're thinking of doing an overview of the diversity of all the islands, and then could have one podcast dedicated to each of our strategic objectives and niches. Moving along to FBO, stands for Fixed Base Operator, otherwise known as Private Jet Operations. These are upscale private jet facilities either on their own, a private airport, or within a full-on public airport. And this is where people have the propensity to fly private or fly very uh, long haul destinations. So we'll have an activation that not only will involve promotion and advertising in the venue itself, but also have the opportunity to align with 
like-minded events happening around the same time, whether something like the Kentucky Derby, the Veuve Clicquot uh, Classic in Los Angeles, U.S. Tennis, or U.S. Golf Open. So an opportunity to hit the right type of consumer when they're ready to spend and think about travel. Moving on to probably one of the things that's most dear to our hearts in the room, as Madame the Minister talked about the human richness and the culture of our people, and Mario talked about storytelling, we've noticed how much the American public just love when the Tishan culture comes to fruition all through interactions with the locals. So we would like to start a storyteller's personality campaign that's going to center on Tahitian stories and voices. And we've already started this with sending almost nearly every press or trade fam trip into the islands of Tahiti and meeting with some of these special people. And then we have this deck available to pitch out to media at all times. We'll also do some events, inviting them to come to the United States and meet with media. And then, as I said, just really having everybody from the U.S. come and visit, whether it's the Tahitian guest houses, the Coral Gardeners, another eco-friendly environmental group, or the Mamas, or somebody who is running a Tahitian guest house and serving delicious food. So we encourage all of you to nominate whoever you would like as a Tahitian personality. And uh, for those of you meeting with me tomorrow, if you have any in your companies, happy to hear about that. Our final action will be a virtual trade show while we are just getting ready to launch the inaugural TD Specialist Conference, something that I talked about on this stage last year that is still great for those who have a lot of destination knowledge and really want to hone in on it. But in a way to have massive reach, we want to do a virtual event where people can register for different partner trade show booths, have the ability to download webinars, presentations, video documents, have a video chat, text, Q&A, and all of this without leaving their office and to do on any kind of device. So we hope to reach more and more people to at least plant the seed of travel to the islands of Tahiti. So those are some of the new things we'll be doing. Otherwise, our KPIs, just like our visitor numbers, we're going to keep growing in all areas except a couple there where we think that we can conserve some funds by just doing what we're doing and amplifying it and not adding more. So I thank you very much, and I think it's about Tama Mai Tai time. Many thanks, Christine, for this intervention. Merci à tous pour votre attention. Nous marquons la fin de la matinée et nous vous retrouvons à partir de 13h15 au même endroit pour une après-midi qui s'annonce remplie de surprises. Nous comptons sur votre présence et ainsi que sur votre participation lors des divers panels que nous vous que nous vous proposons. De plus, nos intervenants sont à votre disposition pour échanger sur les sujets traités. Alors, avant de sortir de la salle, n'oubliez pas, nous avons une formule à disposition, 2000 francs, et vous pouvez payer par chèque ou en cash directement au guichet. Et nous invitons toute l'équipe de Tahiti Tourisme sur, au photo booth sur votre gauche à l'extérieur pour la photo de famille. Tama meitei.